Your jury duty may be the most important civic role you perform outside of a voting booth as a participant in this great democracy. Here in New York, with our system of checks and balances, it's the responsibility of the state, as represented by the prosecution, to present the evidence against any person accused of a criminal act. It's the duty of a grand jury, you people sitting here today, to review that evidence and determine whether that accusation is legally justified. As grand jurors, your decisions must be based on the evidence and the law. And as you serve, always remember that our grand jury system is designed to help protect the rights of citizens and uphold the laws of the land. I'm Leslie Stahl of 60 Minutes. Here you are, ready to begin your grand jury service. But many of you may be asking, what is a grand jury anyway? And how is it different from a trial jury? Well, those are really good questions. And here's a simple, brief answer. A grand jury decides whether or not a person should be formally accused of a crime. If that decision is yes, the grand jury issues what's known as an indictment. An indictment is a grand jury's formal written accusation of a crime. A grand jury does not decide whether the accused is guilty or not guilty. That's the job of a trial jury. There are other important differences between a grand jury and a trial jury. For example, the burden of proof. A grand jury determines whether there is legally sufficient evidence and reasonable cause to believe that a person committed an offense, whereas a trial jury determines whether the prosecution has proved the accused guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. A grand jury proceeding is also different from a jury trial because a grand jury typically hears only from the prosecutor and the prosecutor's witnesses. But there's one thing about grand jury and trial jury service that's the same. You must not read or listen to news stories about the case, and you must not use the internet to search for information about the case, the lawyers, or any individuals involved in the case. Your decisions must be based only on the evidence presented in the grand jury room. Now, I'm here to give all of you an idea of what you'll be doing as grand juror. And by the way, I think you'll find it a fascinating experience. First of all, each of you will receive a copy of Article 190 of the Criminal Procedure Law, which governs grand jury proceedings. This is the legal framework. But let's take a brief look at how the whole system operates. In most instances, the process starts when a person is arrested, though there may be occasions when a grand jury is asked to consider an indictment before an arrest. Now that's where your work begins. When you begin your service, you'll be brought into a grand jury room much like this. The configuration of the grand jury room may vary from county to county. As you can see, there are 23 of you, a number established in English common law centuries ago. The court will choose your four-person and assistant four-person. You will choose your recording secretary. A sonographer will be present to record the testimony and instructions, the official record. Once you're seated and sworn in, the prosecutor will arrive to begin presenting the first case to you, a presentation that will set forth the evidence against an alleged offender. Good morning. I'm an assistant district attorney in New York County. I'm here this morning to present the case of the people against John Doe. At the conclusion of the presentation, I will ask you to vote on one count of robbery in the first degree. You will hear evidence this morning from... The presentations you'll hear from an assistant district attorney may include homicide, robbery, grand larceny, narcotics crimes, possession of stolen property, rape, sodomy, assault, arson, kidnapping, burglary, possession of weapons, practically the whole spectrum of the criminal law. This doesn't mean you'll necessarily hear these cases in your grand jury term. It simply means you could. The prosecutor will present the case, call witnesses, and instruct you on the law. 
you will note that no judge is present during grand jury proceedings. The entire presentation is handled by the prosecutor. But the judge who oversees the grand jury is available should the need arise. Most presentations take only a short time, although some cases might run for several days or more. Yes, sir. Was it light enough inside the building for the victim to take a good look at the man that attacked her? Of the witness come back in and ask her that question. If you have questions for a witness or questions about the law or about the evidence, you may ask these questions of the prosecutor during the presentation or you may ask to speak to a judge. The prosecutors and judges are your legal advisors. And as you will read in Article 190, you are forbidden by law to seek or receive legal advice from any other source. You should also know that the accused person has a right to appear before the grand jury on his or her own behalf. He or she may also ask the grand jury for permission to present other witnesses for the defense. But keep in mind that no accused person has a duty to appear or present witnesses and may not even know of the grand jury proceeding. As a result, it's very rare for an accused person to appear before a grand jury or present witnesses. And don't come to any conclusion, positive or negative, because the defendant does or does not appear. And perhaps this is a good time to remind you that all grand jury proceedings are strictly secret. It's against the law to reveal anything about the cases presented to you. And there are good reasons for this. This strict secrecy ensures that witnesses can cooperate fully. It encourages free and open deliberation among grand jurors, and it protects the innocent person who may be investigated but never indicted. But now back to the proceedings. According to New York Penal Law, Article 160.15, robbery in the first degree is a Class B felony, and it reads... A person is guilty of robbery in the first degree when he forcibly steals property and when, in the course of the commission of the crime or of immediate fight therefrom. After presenting witnesses, the prosecutor will explain to you what law the defendant is accused of violating. After that, the grand jury will deliberate in secret and decide if there's enough evidence to indict the defendant. He or another participant in the crime causes serious physical injury to any person who is not a participant in the crime. That concludes the presentation of the evidence in this case. We're going to step outside and now and then you'll be left alone to deliberate and vote. The law requires at least 16 of you to be present to make a quorum. Of the 16, a vote of 12 or more who have heard the evidence is required for an indictment. If in your deliberations you vote yes for an indictment, this means the defendant has now been formally accused by the people of the state of New York. This case will go to a trial court where the defendant may exercise his or her right to a jury trial. And it will be up to that jury, the trial jury, to decide guilt or non-guilt. If you do not vote for an indictment, then the charges you heard against the accused are dismissed, the end of that particular case. You should also know that as a grand jury, in addition to your vote on an indictment, you also have the authority in some cases to direct the filing of criminal charges to a local criminal court, or send the case to family court, or submit a report on issues concerning the public interest. The prosecutor will inform you when it's appropriate to consider one of these actions. And that's it. Now then, how important is your decision? Well, look at it this way. Accusing a person of a crime is serious business. It is you collectively who decide whether or not to make this formal accusation. As grand jurors, you're a cross-section of the community. And as such, you are serving as an arm of the court not as an agent of the police or the prosecutor. It's essential for you to be attentive and fair-minded in hearing cases and in your deliberations, because you and your decisions are part of the foundation of the criminal justice system here in New York State.
all across New York State in courthouses from Riverhead on Long Island to Buffalo on the shores of Lake Erie. Grand juries such as yours uphold the laws of the land by indicting those individuals believed to have committed crimes and protecting the rights of others against unfounded accusations. Grand jury presentations range from more than 5,000 a year in the most populated boroughs of New York City to just under a handful in our least populous counties. To keep our vast justice system moving swiftly, fairly, and efficiently requires a dedicated core of judges, attorneys, court administrators, and grand jurors just like you. I'm Janet DeFiori, Chief Judge of the Court of Appeals in the State of New York. Thank you for being here today to participate in the work of the New York State Courts. As grand jurors, you now are part of our criminal justice system. Your mission is twofold. On the one hand, to use your power as grand jurors to investigate crimes and hand up an indictment when sufficient evidence exists to do so. On the other, when the evidence is insufficient to protect people from unfounded criminal accusations by not handing up an indictment. We could not preserve the rights of both defendants and victims in our system, protect public safety, and ensure that police and prosecutors meet their obligations without the participation of jurors like you. If any of us found ourselves accused of a felony, we would hope to have an engaged, fair, and impartial grand jury of New Yorkers like you reviewing the prosecutor's evidence against us. We are, however, keenly aware that New Yorkers have busy lives, and we recognize that you have many demands on your time. Knowing that, over the past decade, we've transformed the jury system by increasing the jury pool and reducing the length and frequency of jury service in order to make service more convenient. Like voting, grand jury service gives you the opportunity to participate in a very direct and personal way in our democracy. For this brief period of time, you will be performing an important, essential public service. Thank you for your participation in the pursuit of justice.